Rocksteady's Batman Arkham Asylum turned 10 years old last year, but that hasn't taken anything off its shine. The first entry in the studio's Arkham trilogy is considered one of the finest and most influential games of the last console generation, blending together action, stealth, and gorgeous visuals to create the definitive Batman experience in video games. Undoubtedly one of Rocksteady's best skills is environmental storytelling. The use of easter eggs, riddles, and other references in Arkham Asylum fleshed out the world in great detail. It felt lived in. It felt like an Arkhamverse. But which easter eggs were the best? There are some seriously cool secrets in Asylum that Arkham fans will be aware of, but some that they may have missed too. So yes, that's right folks, I'm Ewan from Mod Culture Gaming. this is another Batman video, and here are the 10 coolest easter eggs, secrets, and references from Arkham Asylum explained. Number 10. Thomas Elliot working the Arkham Night Shift Long before he was revealed as the identity thief in Arkham City, and even longer before he enacted his admittedly anticlimactic scheme in Arkham Knight, Dr. Thomas Tommy Elliot, better known as Hush to the Heroes and Villains of Gotham, was busy working in Arkham Asylum. This particular easter egg doubles as a riddle, which can be found as Batman rescues Dr. Chen in the Asylum's medical facility. Elliot's schedule has him working long into the early hours of the morning, although one can imagine that wasn't all that he was doing. Elliot's Arkhamverse origin was fleshed out further in Arkham City and Night, and he can even be seen in the church clutching a medical box in Arkham City, presumably containing all the faces of his victims that he used to piece together his own version of Bruce's face. Oh no. Number 9. The Injustice Gang Strikes Again One of the best locations for easter eggs in Arkham Asylum is Harley Quinn's old office. Of course, Quinn herself had once been a psychologist at the facility before she fell for the Joker, and her infatuation with the Clown Prince is clear for all to see once you enter. Also cool to note is that the various tapes relating to Harley in Asylum serve as a neat adaptation of Paul Dini and Bruce Timm's Mad Love comic, which told the character's origin. The comic was adapted into an episode of the new Batman Adventures, which means Arlene Sorkin, the voice behind Harley Quinn, has technically starred in two adaptations of that particular story. For all that, the Harley room offers loads of cool insight into her origins, including her famous jester hat, there's another secret in the room that instantly made the Arkhamverse feel so much bigger than it initially seemed. Take a look at the various newspaper printouts that adorn Quinn's wall, and you can spot a couple of references to the Injustice Gang, the second most famous DC supervillain team in the comics. The first being the Legion of Doom. Duh. Number 8. Ray Shell Ghoul's Wandering Corpse Ra's al Ghul is the principal antagonist of Batman Arkham City, and even has a key part to play in Arkham Knight's Season of Infamy DLC. Factor in the League of Assassins' presence in Arkham Origins and his little easter egg in Arkham Asylum, and you could actually describe the undying ecological terrorist as a series staple. Fans first stumbled across Ra's in this series while on their way to Dr. Young's office in Arkham Asylum. Before they turn the corner, there's a sort of mini morgue along the wall. One of the bodies poking out has a toe tag with Raish's name on it, showing that the head of the demon was now the head of the deceased... Dun. It, it made sense in my head. There's actually a whole backstory to this, with it being confirmed that Bats personally escorted Raish's body to Arkham before the end of the game. However, should the player leave the scene and come back later on, they'll find Al Ghul's body missing, paving the way for his return in Arkham City two years later. Number 7. The Ventriloquist and Scarface It's always been something of a wish of mine to see the Ventriloquist in the Arkham series. He was one of the more sympathetic villains in Batman the Animated Series, but he didn't make the cut for the games, only being referenced by name in Arkham City and Arkham Knight, by which point he had been replaced by Peyton Riley. However, while Arnold Wesker himself wasn't able to nab a physical appearance in the Arkham series, his other half, the mastermind gangster puppet known as Scarface, certainly did. He could be seen in Warden Sharp's office in the game, before being nabbed by Joker for the climax. He's also a key figure in one of the many Scarecrow Nightmare segments, where he's the new Warden of the Asylum and is being voiced by Mark Hamill. Still though, Joker grabbing Scarface before he juices himself up with Titan is more than just a throwaway reference. The game actually explain that the Harlequin of Hate is somewhat obsessed with the puppet, with the thugs even going out of their way to procure multiple versions of the doll in Arkham City. Number 6. Wait, was Jason Todd in the game all along? 
Irrespective of whether or not this plot twist in Arkham Knight kind of, sort of, makes no sense, and especially not if you believe what the Time comics tell you, it was a pretty cool revelation to discover that Joker had faked Jason Todd's death and had been keeping him hostage in a walled-off part of the asylum for years. Joker's torture of Todd in the Arkham games borrows from both Death in the Family and the Batman Beyond Return the Joker animated film. And even though Asylum's writer Paul Dini wasn't involved in the story for Arkham Knight, if you go back to Arkham Asylum with the twist in mind, it almost seems like Rocksteady were planning it all along. Almost. First off, Joker does actually reference Robin in Arkham Asylum, saying, What's it like in your organization? Do you punish your hired help when they fail, or is that saucy outfit you make him wear punishment enough? The fact that Joker hid the boy wonder in the asylum has also led fans to investigate whether or not they can find where he might be hiding, with some speculating that he was held somewhere near Dr. Young's office, around where Amadeus Arkham was once confined, or even in a different cell, with fans having noticed scrawlings that seemingly depict Joker's mastermind in the creation of the Red Hood. Either that, or Joker's origin as Red Hood. It's kind of hard to tell. There are some compelling theories out there that tie Joker's activity in Asylum with him trying to hide Jason, but nothing concrete for now. Of course, with Rhapsody being so good at hiding secrets, maybe there's a way to find the second Robin and we just don't know it. Number 5. The Cells of Batman's Rogues Gallery With Arkham Asylum housing the most famous members of Batman's Rogues Gallery, it would have been more than a little awkward if the game didn't feature some of their cells. Fortunately, Rocksteady included a truckload of different cells in the game. Maxi Zeus's cell can be seen in the intensive treatment area, complete with all sorts of Greek symbols. Two faces, meanwhile, could be found in the penitentiary, complete with all sorts of election material back when Harvey Dent was Gotham's district attorney. Other cells in the game include Calendar Man's, which is filled to bursting point with dates and calendars, an abandoned cell once occupied by Killer Croc, and even a secret lair used by Scarecrow, which can be found in the elevator room after the Harley drops the elevator on Batman. Number 4. Is George Clooney in this? People might balk at this, but genuinely, George Clooney should have been an amazing Batman. He'd knock it out of the park as Bruce Wayne any day of the week. It's just a shame that, you know, the one Batman film he had involved nipple armor and a rampaging Arnie as cold, quiet Mr. Freeze, but um, my point still stands. But whatever, I digress, because even while audiences continue to remonstrate on the failings of Clooney's Dark Knight, Rocksteady, like the champs they are, chose to reference the actor in Arkham Asylum. After rescuing Aaron Cash and another Doctor from being trapped by Joker gas, a message will display on a nearby notice board that reads Dr. Clooney to Gynecology. This acknowledges Clooney's performance as the eponymous character in 1997's Batman and Robin, but also his breakout role in ER, where he played Dr. Doug Ross for five years. Number 3. Jason Woodrue's Involvement in Poison Ivy's Origin Poison Ivy plays a big, big role in Arkham Asylum, with her plants having been used to develop Dr. Young's Titan formula, and she nearly goes up against the Joker too. She unintentionally benefits from Joker infecting her plants with the new formula at one point, which leads her to almost decimate the entire island. Bar that though, Rocksteady never really take the time to delve into Ivy's backstory, at least not in the main game. She's one of Batman's most famous rogues after all, and the only thing fans really need to know is that A, she's pretty much half plant, half woman, and B, she's an eco-terrorist with a pathological love for nature. That said, Ivy's origins are interesting, and they involve another DC villain who belongs to a whole other corner of the DC universe, Jason Woodrow, aka the Floronic Man. Weirdly, Woodrow's involvement with Ivy's origin is actually a product of 1997's Batman and Robin, and it was brought into the comics after 2006's Infinite Crisis. The same origin is used in the Arkhamverse, with Isley revealing in an audio tape how Jason had transformed her into the being she is today. With Woodrow confirmed to exist in the Arkhamverse, one could reasonably expect Swamp Thing to be around too. Now he'd make for a great game. Number 2. Scarecrow's Two Most Famous Portrayals Scarecrow is one of Batman's most infamous and fearsome villains, and nowhere is he more creepy than in the Arkham games. Portrayed by Dino Andrade in Arkham Asylum, Rocksteady decide to give their version of Jonathan Crane a makeover fit for a horror film, outfitting the good doctor with Freddy Krueger-like syringe fingers and also an inbuilt gas mask to go underneath his already terrifying Scarecrow mask. It's an unsettling image, and Andrade does the role real justice for the brief amount of time he's in the game. 
Of course, he wasn't the first to play Scarecrow outside of the comics, and Rocksteady acknowledged that in Arkham Asylum by paying reference to two other actors who did, Jeffrey Combs and Killian Murphy. Combs played Scarecrow in the new Batman Adventures, while Murphy himself was the first to portray the character in live action, starting with 2005's Batman Begins. Well, technically at least, so long as we ignore Coolio's cameo as the character in Batman and Robin, which maybe we shouldn't? Well, anyway, both Combs and Murphy are referenced in one of Scarecrow's interview tapes. Both actors are now doctors, and both are now also unfortunately victims of the villain's experiments with fear. Ouch. And number one, what else? The Warden's Secret Room. The mother of all Arkham Easter eggs, the one that Rocksteady themselves had to reveal to the public. Seriously, how could any Easter egg rank any higher? At the 2009 VGAs, Warner Brothers surprised everyone by showcasing a CGI trailer for a then untitled sequel to Arkham Asylum. The Arkham City title wasn't to be revealed for another year, but if fans had been a little more diligent in applying explosive gel to, you know, every single part of the Asylum environment, they would have discovered what the sequel was all about before any major announcement. After waiting around a year, Roxley finally took pity on the public, and they revealed that they've hidden a secret room in Warden Sharp's office. Applying three doses of explosive gel to an unassuming wall and detonating it opens up Sharp's secret room, where players can see blueprints of what would eventually become Arkham City. The studio would try the trick again in Arkham City, but the Warden's room went undetected for a whole year. That's some next level easter egging, and a solid reminder that, when it comes to secrets and references, Rocksteady are the undisputed kings. And yeah, that was our look back on the coolest easter eggs and secrets in Batman Arkham Asylum. Want us to do a video on the best eggs from Arkham City? If so, please be sure to hit that like button as hard as Batman hits his enemies, and to also subscribe if you haven't done so already. You can find more articles like this at oneculture.com forward slash gaming, and finally, more of me on Twitter at you and ruins things. That's all for now though, I hope you're all doing well wherever you are, and I'll see you next time. Bye!